So I started working in a more, I guess, pedagogically strategic way with more diverse populations um, and using writing as a tool for bringing people together. So in the case of dialogue, it's about getting all of the possible perspectives on the, the topic on the table and expanding them outward. And even if it's not one that we hold personally, to try to imagine what some of the counter arguments would be or some of the counter opinions would be. And students, I think, tend to find this to be relieving because there isn't really a right answer. And to know how to therefore not just argue on behalf of one perspective, but to also know how to respond to these other perspectives that are um, out there in the world. I try to set the tone from the very beginning, saying, we're going to go there. We're going to talk about these things, and we're going to do it respectfully. And we're going to ask questions that are difficult to ask, because that's what you do as a journalist. Diversity is not like an, an add-on thing we do. We don't, in journalism, go out and say, OK, let's check this box, make sure we've got X perspective. Diversity is part of telling the full picture of your community. And as good journalists, that's what you do. You're not out to represent specific interests or factions. Um, or to frame the issue in a particular way. Really your goal in terms of doing good journalism is to get a, find out what everybody's thinking as much as possible. Of course, everybody, it's a broad term. You can't find out what everybody's thinking, but to make sure that you have uh, included the various value systems, because different people are going to value different things. So sometimes simply talking to a person who comes from a different race, class, uh, gender, generation, or place, uh, one of those fault lines can illuminate issues for you that you had not considered when you were formulating your questions. So um, good stories come from good questions. We can't ask good questions based solely on our own lived experience. My thoughts and my direction I feel in terms of supporting this kinds of, these kinds of things actually came because I saw it happen. And probably the first and most important one was this experience at camp, camp team, which is a camp for, uh, for our students alongside people in the community who have developmental disabilities. And we spend a 30 hour period of time together. And the students act as leaders, but more importantly, they're also there as co-campers. You know, they're all experiencing it together. That was the first thing that happened. And I was blown away by some of the comments in reflection in as they were analyzing the experience for them. And I did ask questions about, did their perceptions of people with disabilities change as a result of this? I did ask some prompting questions, but, but I was quite amazed with what they, came, what they came up with as significant about that experience. So it was at that point that I wondered, what happened here, why? And can I find ways for that similar thing to happen in other classes that are really quite different? Teaching for tolerance isn't about me. It's about opening up the classroom space in a way that the student conversation dominates. And, and it's not that it can dominate all of the time, because I certainly have a lot of information that I would like to share, but to allow their stories to become the stories that I tell. When students are really open with me and giving me that kind of respectful pushback, that's when I feel like I've really succeeded. When a student feels they can disagree with me and uh, present a different point of view and, and argue back, to me that feels really successful. And um, I, I don't go into the classroom to impart my wisdom on anybody. I, I go into the classroom to, um, to inspire people to think in their own ways. I'm borrowing from Waldorf School philosophy, but they, when they look at teaching children, they look at the idea of teaching the whole child, which they say includes the head, the hands, and the heart. And where we might use different language for it, I started to realize I think those three elements are essential to what I consider to be the most important part of what I might be able to, to do for students as an instructor, and that would be to, to give them opportunities to come to their own decision about how they want to live their professional life.